evening friends professor brahm singh horticulture foundation bshf a not for profit organization and myself welcome you all to the talk number 3 of this series which is named as 4h means urban horticulture for health and happiness bshf is thankful to bear semenis to sponsor this webinar series i welcome happily co organizers dr pitam kalia icr rafi ahmed kidwai awardi and former head division of vegetable science icar iari new delhi and dr shalendra rajan former director icar central institute of tropical horticulture lucknow the talk this evening is on protected cultivation in india by mr shivanand jamihal who is market development head protected at bears seed division we welcome shivad who honored our request to deliver the webinar friends urban horticulture in urban horticulture importance of protected cultivation can hardly be over emphasized most of the metros are practicing protected cultivation for flowers vegetables strawberry production and most of the cities in one way or the other are practicing protected cultivation for raising horticulture nurseries or horticulture plants that then production of flowers particularly the cut flowers vegetable crops number of them which mr shiva will be pointing out and uh, <coughs> the nurseries uh, they are being multiplied under protected cultivation and this has been necessitated by you know all due to the climate change rapid urbanization shrinking land and other resources for agriculture or horticulture so today <clears throat> shivanand jamihal would educate us on some aspect of protected cultivation is difficult to deal the entire gamut of protected cultivation in less than 1 hour so let us see what all uh, dr shiva will be telling us uh, <coughs> friends questions you may raise in chat box we will try to answer uh, in the end of the talk now i request dr pitam kalia to introduce the speaker please okay thank you sir good evening most revered uh, founder of uh, bshf padma shri professor bram singh ji co organizer dr shailendra rajan ji and uh, today's uh, speaker shivanand jamihal ji it's my proud uh, privilege to introduce uh, today's speaker who would be deliberating on most important uh, subject uh, that is the futuristic subject which is gaining momentum in the country protected cultivation in india uh, mr shivanand jamihal has had his uh, graduation from university of uh, agriculture sciences dharwad and uh, masters from ccs uh, haryana agriculture university in vegetable science and uh, the academic highlights he has had uh, uh, during this period is the national eligibility test that he 
cracked in 2010 by Nam, where he had sixth rank in senior research fellow fellowship by ICR and 14th rank in junior research fellowship in 2005, which was also conducted by ICR at All India level. Mr. Shivanand is associated with Bayer Crop Science for the last 14 years in product testing and development and has had a professional experience of more than 13 years in product testing and development especially open field processing and protected cultivation, as also in value chain, vehicle production, R&D, station management, etc. Presently, he is working as a market development head protected for India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka with the buyer vegetable seed division. He has a respons responsibility for India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, for protected cultivation and processing segments, portfolio management strategy and recommendations. Also customer focus, commercial sport alignment with global breeding and uh, segment leads as also in portfolio establishment. Mr. Shivanand, in his uh, uh, role prior to that, worked as the technology development manager for Karnataka and Tamil Nadu as also testing and operation manager. In both the present and previous roles, he has handled early and advanced generation vegetable hybrid trials, product advancement, commercial sport, agronomy sport to the farmers on specific hybrids and product positioning. For his uh, contribution, he has been having awards and recognitions globally for Asia as also for Indian region. Globally, he has uh, Distinguished Development Award 2018 and Global R&D Excellence Award 2020. For Asia Pacific Awards, he has uh, Asia Technology Development Bakken Award 2017 and also Asia Waging Technical Excellence Award 2016. For Indian Region Awards, he has been awarded or credited with Monsanto Excellence Award, India Technical Development Champion, Outstanding Performance Award, Research Excellence Award, and Monsanto testing champion. So for his contribution, uh, he has been suitably uh, credited with these recognition and awards. And uh, since he is heading the protected sector, so we expect that uh, the you know, we are going to have a important uh, talk on this uh, important area, protected cultivation in India where uh, protected cultivation is gaining momentum and uh, has a lot of uh, uh, advantages as has been highlighted by the uh, chairman in the beginning. So with this, I invite uh, Mr. Shivanand Jamihal to take the floor and deliver his talk. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thanks for your kind words. And uh, uh, first of all, I am very much privileged to be here to present uh, about uh, protected cultivation in India. I'm just going to share my screens. Is it visible, sir? Yeah, it is visible. Yes, go ahead. OK, thank you so much, sir. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, just I'm going to cover about protected cultivations. What are the, you know, uh, how in India it is growing up and what are the key challenges? Uh, what kind of structures we have? And uh, before going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, for this uh, protected what are the key requirements to understand and uh, how, uh, what ventilation is is uh, you know uh, is a major uh, uh, play uh, it, it, it why it is important and fumigation sterilization also i'm just going to cover a little bit and ipm concept also and how grafting technology will help uh, farmers uh, you know in coming days and also uh, three major crops uh, quickly i will cover uh, in terms of protect I means cultivation practices like uh, cucumber capsicum and tomatoes and uh, uh, what kind of value chain is is you know uh, supports and also buyer uh, uh, seminis portfolio and uh, how buyer is you know uh, 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 supports farmers uh, in 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 terms of uh, connecting uh, uh, like uh, you know, uh, traders, aggregators, and processors, and uh, exporters, all those things. And lastly, I'm going to cover phytosanitation sanita sanitization aspects in protected cultivation. So if you come to India, overview on protected cultivation, yes, of course, in, in, in Asia, if you take China is growing very fast with their uh, smaller structures like uh, solar house, and uh, they are in top, actually globally and also in, in, in Asian countries. So as you all of you know, uh, European countries are they are much ahead uh, of us uh, in terms of technology, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, glass house and because they need a glass house, uh, they, they have most of the months, you know, in a year, they will uh, go through this winter season. That's how they evolved all this protected cultivation over the period of time. If you're coming to India, it is uh, around 25,000 hectares. Now it is it is growing fast. Uh, maybe it is uh, more, more than 25,000 hectares, and uh, 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 because uh, year on year it is it is growing fast. If you talk about major states like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana, they are going really in 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 a uh, rapid uh, you know. Uh, growth and uh, Himachal Pradesh and Punjab. In these states, it's already quite established and growing fast. And even in terms of technology and in terms of growing techniques, farmers are well uh, acquainted with all the uh, practices. And some states, they are uh, emerging like uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, uh, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. These, in these states also, Slowly, people have started uh, to uh, go uh, grow their vegetables in under protected cultivation. So, if you talk about the crops like capsicum or sweet peppers or uh, and English cucumber, uh, these are the very common crops across the country. Farmers are growing, and third crop is coming like tomatoes, especially cherry and beef stick. These two segments are growing and uh, growing very fast in the uh, urban areas especially you know like high-end customers and some of the companies like uh, you know uh, like uh, uh, people uh, they are into business of uh, these burgers and other fast food kind of things and also many leafy vegetables people are growing under protected cultivation under soil or soilless cultivation especially hydroponics hydroponics is is, is getting more popular under this uh, leafy vegetables and flowers, of course, it has started uh, long back and now also it is there. And uh, some nutraceutical crops also people have started growing under protected cultivation. What factors or uh, what are the key uh, points driving uh, this protected cultivation in India? First thing is government is giving subsidies, uh, you know, uh, in most of the states and also many companies many corporate people started investing in this segment and also they are setting up you know uh, value chain and also they want to sell their uh, produce in their own brands and uh, and also they they are you know doing some of the exports also and also urban people preference is getting more and is, is, is more uh, you know uh, uh, popular now because few uh, people coming from abroad and uh, and urban people because of nutrition and uh, awareness health awareness many people started eating such uh, this kind of uh, you know 
uh, exotic crops and also farmers are getting high productivity finally high income from this uh, you know protected cultivation if you talk about key few challenges uh, in, in in greenhouse or protected cultivation in india we we are facing bit challenge of uh, high temperature especially in summers uh, if uh, the temperature goes beyond 35 degrees centigrade most of the, most of the crops comes under stress that that is uh, creating a lot of uh, you know trouble to the farmers especially uh, in terms of fruit setting and uh, pest and disease management that is is a major challenge farmers are facing and even soil type also wherever farmers are growing under uh, you know uh, soil cultivation there they are facing some ec problem ph problem and also pest and disease problem and how to overcome it Th these are the major uh, challenges but it is not easy to overcome in a short period over the period uh, slowly uh, this greenhouse constructions people also changing their structure and how to reduce the temperature and how to manage uh, the uh, inside the greenhouse with the temperature and RH, uh, installing some of the additional input uh, uh, like uh, equipments like uh, exhaust fans, more, uh, creating uh, you know uh, space to more uh, ventilation and aeration, all those things. And also uh, maintaining soil health is also most important uh, in adding more organic matters and uh, soil reclamation and all those things. coming to the types of structures yes this uh, natural ventilated polyhouses and net house these two structures are most common in india especially natural ventilated polyhouses are very common because they are cost effective and suitable for all the crops and uh, easy to uh, maintenance wise is also easy compared to high tech uh, you know structures only one challenge here uh, you can face like during summer we can uh, there is a you know a issue with the high temperature that is the most uh, challenging part we across india we are you know facing otherwise it is most well suited and uh, there is uh, improvement required in terms of height of the polyoses in the coming years with maintaining all the stability of the structure maybe few companies are working on those aspects if you want to talk about specification structure height should be at least four meter that gutter height should be four meter or five meter five meter is excellent uh, with the uh, you know uh, even the polythene quality is also most important it should be uv stabilized and uh, 200 micron thickness that 50 to 70 percent diffusion uh, percentage should be there and at least 85 percent light transmission should have uh, in this uh, polythene quality and one more most common thing is orientation of the structure it should always face north to south so that uh, you will get a more uh, you know aeration and uh, uh, in the structure uh, the plants will receive you know uh, good sunlight throughout the day that's that's uh, that's how this concept has come up coming to net house Net house is most suitable for Indian climate in, during uh, summer season. So it is cost effective, suitable for all the crops and, uh, and especially cucumber for North India, it is very successful in under this kind of structures and no mass maintenance. Only one problem is during rainy season because of, uh, you know, this net. Uh, uh, most of the time you will uh, plants will get uh, water and many uh, pest and disease especially disease uh, issues will be there specification part there is no much specification here the height should be at least around 4 meter and side net should have a minimum of 40 to 50 mm mesh and shading percent net shading net percentage should be around 50 percent or 35 percent depending on the crop uh, demand. If you see some of the advanced uh, high tech uh, structures like pan pad system, retractable system, and glass house system, 
of course glass house is very very expensive for indian cultivation i think it is long way to go or it is uh, uh, at this point of time i think it is you know uh, uh, highly expensive for our farmers some uh, positive indications are coming from the retractable kind of structures because the uh, top or roof of the structure will be open sometimes uh, whenever the plant requires we can open it we, or we can close it it is highly uh, automation oriented and uh, regulate uh, means you can control everything but again there is uh, you know there will be some you know cost uh, uh, in uh, uh, expensive part in this case and also uh, for all these structures uh, electricity is 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 uh, must and should have at least for 12 hours and 12 or 24 hours this this is primary requirement and maintenance wise is also very high so what are the requirements to know before constructions yes water ec and ph and soil ec and ph is prime most important one should think about these two parts well before of uh, planning for these requirements because this 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 uh, protected structures are highly expensive so farmers should think or anyone should think about these two part and electricity is, is also most important land leveling and uh, surrounding structures there should not be any shadow from outside any border plants or uh, you know uh, wind breakers and this market access is, is also one of the key important factor for this protected cultivation again labor labor availability within that technical and highly skill set labors is, is 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 much required for this protected cultivation and also selection of right structures that is also most important whether we can go for net house or natural ventilated polyhouses if you talk about ventilation ventilation is is must required for any structures this gives a chance or opportunity to create more aeration inside this structure because all the four sides we should have a, a you know a 40 mm mesh and uh, that should be a white colored one because it gives uh, you know opportunity to uh, uh, for the good aeration and also some extent we can avoid all these sucking pest through this and also nowadays 50 mm mesh is good for most of the sucking pest but there will be a blockage in the aeration that's the reason still 40 mm mesh is more popular in this natural ventilated polyhouse sometimes shade nets are also being used depending on the crop requirements uh, coming to fumigation fumigation is another key important factor in the polyhouses or net houses because we will not go for frequent crop rotation because we don't have that opportunity in india that's the reason fumigation is also most important four percent of formaldehyde is is uh, it is uh, required uh, application uh, you know uh, four liter per square meter is, is is required application time is 15 days before transplanting and uh, in, in on every bed we should create some furrows small furrows and then apply this formaldehyde and uh, cover with a plastic or polythene and after three days we need to remove that and uh, then we can uh, uh, after 15 days we can go for uh, planting before that one should take care of this proper usage of this uh, handling this formaldehyde using proper mask and hand gloves is, is most important and coming to solarization uh, it is very much effective and cost effective uh, this this for indian cultivation or indian uh, condition it is 
uh, one should go for this or practice this pract uh, uh, practices because it is uh, uh, it is very easy and uh, we can avoid most of the soil bone diseases and also nematodes first we need to cover with the before uh, you know covering plastic uh, the soil preparation and whatever foim or manures we, uh, we should apply and then uh, irrigate the beds or land and then go for this uh, mulching or uh, plastic polythene applic means covering of this with the polythene and then every alternate days go for some light irrigation and allow uh, to uh, create a, a, a hot and humid uh, uh, in the uh, soil so that most of the uh, uh, soil borne disease means organisms can you know it will kill uh, during this process ipm concept is most important for the protected cultivation because here uh, we are not going it is uh, we, we should uh, use or inculcate all the uh, you know uh, possible uh, pest management system in uh, in our uh, cultivation practices first thing is we should inspect and monitor the uh, pest and disease occurrence and every day we should one should visit the field and especially lower side of the leaf and then try to identify that what it is and uh, uh, and and what is a causal agent then we need to forecast uh, well before based on the weather uh, uh, forecasting because if if you are going to receive rains and most common diseases like powder mildew downy mildew or some wilt can means not wilt these two are most common uh, during rainy season that that's also most important and also threshold level is also economical threshold level is also most important and uh, and coming to next one is cultural control cu cultural practices chemical practices mechanical one and biological controls these these uh, we have to go last for this chemical control we need to try to control with other three method like cultural mechanical and biological systems and also we need to maintain all the records and and we should e evaluate them and up, up, apply the best uh, system for the means subsequent years So cultural practices, everybody knows that crop rotation, row spacing, using a high quality seeds, managed with the nutrients. And for the biologicals, we have uh, many, uh, you know, pathogens like uh, trichoderma, sunomonas for this fungal uh, diseases and bacterial uh, uh, diseases. And also mass releasing of natural enemies, especially ladybird beetle that kills many, you know, uh, that uh, eats many sucking pests and also mechanical or physical one using traps weeding mulching and uh, 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 using uh, removing of infected plants burning of crop residues all those things and last one comes like seed treatment and chemical treatment and also so uh, we should know what uh, what kind of disease or pest will come at what stage of the crop most commonly we will get like damping off and uh, some uh, 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 cut worms at the initial stage and then once foliage started then sucking pest and powder mildew and all those things so we should uh, 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 well aware about the, those things and what time irrigation is also matters morning irrigation is very much uh, applic means practical for all the process like photosynthesis uptaking nutrients and also some extent this is an pest uh, you know attack like if you go for uh, afternoon for the irrigation then you will face some of the uh, wilt issues in on the plant and also nutrition role so in case if you go for excess nitrogen application then some sucking pest and foliar diseases uh, we can expect because plants will get more succulent and uh, any sucking first can come and start, you know, damaging the crop.
and phosphorus deficiency will leads to downy mildew attack similarly potassium leads to powder mildew attack and going to the next uh, topic like grafting technology why it is required because one thing is we are use you are growing the crops year and year on most of the cases same crop or few crops like uh, cucumber capsicum and tomatoes we don't have much options at this point of time and also this grafted uh, grafting like roosters is is giving will give better uh, you know uh, resistant to some of the soil borne diseases and also longevity longevity is also most important because from transplanting to last harvest at least farmers expect 11 to 12 months to give continuous yield uh, and maintaining that vigor a plant should have that ability so that's the reason most of the root stocks will have a rigorous rooting root system with that the plant will survive till end of the crop so this tomato and cucumber crops are, are uh, means widely are commonly used across the globe uh, this root stocks are being used across the globe so uh, these are the you know some of the techniques like uh, i will take just quickly tomato so uh, the rootstock should uh, you know uh, uh, so uh, two to three days before then you know mm, scion and then uh, after uh, 15 18 days we need to start uh, doing this uh, grafting once you do the graft all the seedlings should be kept under uh, like uh, under 25 degrees centigrade with 100 100 percent relative humidity for five to six days earlier people used to uh, have a small uh, uh, traditional method like uh, covering uh, plastic uh, on the seedlings and now uh, uh, in some advanced countries they are using uh, this uh, recovery rooms and then we need to uh, uh, take those seedlings to the again nurseries uh, and then uh, up to around 15 days and then we should go for transplanting with that, we will quickly cover some of the cultivation practices of cucumber, colored capsicum or green capsicum and tomatoes. In cucumber, generally farmers call it as a English cucumber and European cucumber. And also globally, it, it is called as a beet alpha parthenocarpic cucumber. You, you can see again uh, in the advanced countries, they are using some uh, snacking cucumbers also. Snacking means just a smaller size of uh, this normal English cucumber. One important thing is it doesn't require any pollination. Every node will be productive, at least two to three or four fruits. And high productivity, uh, you know, uh, comes from each plant and uh, quick, you know, uh, turnover means within 100, 120 days, the crop will get over, the uh, will not be you know farmers will not wait till long for getting production and coming to general requirements for BAP cucumber cultivation here uh, generally farmers go for 8000 to 10000 plants per acre so with that uh, you know uh, maintaining uh, means bed width should be around 20 to 30 centimeter and uh, sorry bed height should be around 20 to 30 centimeter bed width 80 to 100 centimeter working space uh, will be around 80 centimeter and plant to plant distance 45 to 50 centimeter row to row distance is uh, 45 to 60 centimeter and uh, sowing and planting there are two systems in cucumber few farmers go for direct seed sowing and few of them uh, uh, go for this transplanting direct seed sowing is also uh, it's it's uh, uh, it is very common only because some rodents are creating some trouble at the early stage that's the reason farm nowadays farmers are growing for the transplanting system 
12 to 15 days old seedlings are, are uh, uh, should be used for the transplanting and most of the cases uh, evening is the best uh, you know uh, time for the transplanting and pruning and training is another uh, very very important aspects in cucumber at least first five to six nodes we should remove all the side shoots for you know maintaining a good fruit quality fruits uh, till the end because uh, that uh, all the energy will die plant will divert to the you know main uh, stem so that uh, uh, in further or later pickings also uh, you know uh, plant gives a better quality fruits and training it is most common practice so people or farmers are used to it. Uh, there are two one two methods. One is the nets. Uh, some farmers are using a nets, and some of them are using an individual thread to uh, uh, train for these uh, cucumbers. And one more thing is pruning. In in a at least once or twice we should go for pruning and training uh, in in cucumber cultivation because cucumbers are fast growing in habit so that we should be aware about these two uh, things well in advance nutrient management is is very important aspects in in cucumber or in fact in any crop so here mix of both uh, like uh, organic and and fertilizer is is most important in this case because if you have a good amount of organic matter in soil that creates a micro climate within that root zone and then plant will be very robust and healthy till end so with that so basic some of the basic uh, fertilizers like means before that uh, fom or any organic matter or any manure is must along with that uh, if you have that facility to add Trichoderma, Pseudomonas, Bavaria, Phacelomyces, and Vam. This, uh, if you add in the organic matter, leave for around 10 15 days to multiply this culture and then apply on the beds, and then you can go for this fertilizers. And after, even during the crop stage, humic acid, fulvic acid, seaweed extract is also most important to maintain this organic content in the soil and also IHR vegetable special is working good in most of the farmers build in southern uh, parts of India that also it foliar application at uh, uh, three grams per liter of water will gives excellent results in in cucumber and also nutrient management here uh, it I will not go through each and every numbers here I just I will uh, mention few of the fertilizers what stage it is most important this 1261 is most uh, important during uh, you know root establishment or early stage of the crop we need to go for little higher uh, you know site and then cnn 13045 is also most important so we can split few of the, you can group uh, those uh, fertilizers in in uh, three uh, group like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, even micronutrients is also most important. All this magnesium sulfate, copper sulfate, ammonium molybdenate, and uh, EDTA, iron, boron, all these are most important for any crop, but especially cucumber, also, it is most important. Coming to pest and disease management, downy mildew is a major uh, disease in cucurbits or especially in English cucumber. If, if the climate is cool and moist weather, definitely if uh, relative humidity is more than 80%, you can expect downy mildew uh, in, in cucumber. For that, we should have, uh, you know, uh, some uh, precautions like Aliet, Profiler, Infinito. These three chemicals are working fine with this, uh, against this disease. Again, here some of them are not label claimed for a few of the crops. They are in the process of, you know, getting a label. Uh, but based on the uh, trials and 
the market development some of them we are mentioning here most of them are level claimed on and for least faults gummy, gummy stem blight is again coming uh, uh, really in a big way uh, people are facing this one uh, during uh, flowering stage especially flowering to fruiting stage the base uh, means at the collar region plant starts giving you know uh, kind of uh, gummy ooze kind of things that is is uh, uh, after that plant eventually will get uh, you know die against this native and you know uh, lona experience is working fine and for sucking fest again all these sucking fest are uh, very common you can go with the moento sevento oberon and uh, nematode is most important molecule or uh, sorry a, a pest in in cucumber especially for that we have you can go multiple way of doing uh, other things but uh, 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 some of the microorganisms are not so effective uh, for uh, this uh, against nematode and vellum prime is is uh, uh, after doing a uh, lot of trialing and all vellum prime is working fine the application part is like for cucumber uh, so uh, 250 we, we need to go for two uh, split uh, application 250 uh, ml per acre at initial like uh, after if you if if it is uh, you know direct sowing crop maybe around 20 to 30 days once we have to go for first application and the same 250 ml per acre we need to uh, go for second application after 40 to 50 days of uh, you know uh, of uh, crop stage and if it is transplanting maybe around uh, 5 to 8 days uh, uh, crop stage we need to go for first application and second application after 20 25 days in in a transplanted crop basically here a uh, few means uh, soil should be uh, moist while apply, uh, applying this vellum and after application also go for a light irrigation because to uh, you know uh, spread this chemical across the root zone some of the table i have mentioned here but i will not go through entire uh, those things coming to harvesting here generally in english cucumber or parthenocarpi cucumber 35 to 38 days uh, you can start getting the uh, yield or harvesting and uh, in, during winter it may uh, go beyond more than 45 days also because uh, during winter the crop uh, you know uh, uh, growth will get you know slower because of winter and uh, every alternate days uh, uh, harvesting is most common or it is required and also average yield is around 40 to 45 tons per acre depend again it depends on the management uh, but uh, average if you take uh, all all india average it's around 40 to 45 tons per acre but in winter it will be almost uh, like uh, half of uh, this uh, you know around 20 to 30 tons per acre again crop duration is uh, uh, 100 to 120 days coming to sweet pepper quickly i will go with uh, this crop here selection of seedling is most most important because everything starts with nursery here so uh, we should be aware about the nursery practices and seedling health and vigor uh, is, is most important while selecting the seedlings from any of the nurseries and also root zone it should be well established and color of the root should be white so it, it is an indication of you know healthy uh, uh, plants or you can say it's one of the indication most of the time 35 to 40 days old seedlings are is, is, is uh, uh, you know suitable for the transplanting and most of it means here also it is same maybe uh, 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 so plant to plant spacing we can reduce here uh, in in uh, commonly in in uh, colored capsicum or green capsicum 2.7 to 3 plants per square meter is 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 most desirable 
in in, in a roughly what we call in a day uh, five beds should accommodate that is a perfect you know uh, spacing or we can say or uh, number of beds you can accommodate and planting again 35 to 40 days old planting uh, means seedlings we need to transplant and uh, root zone should not disturb while planting and also uh, it should be in zigzag manner and a uh, few of the operations are, are very much uh, you know important in the capsicum pruning training and thinning fruit thinning is the three these three points are most important especially in pruning after means 25 to 30 days after planting we, uh, means uh, pruning is uh, uh, required first one again it, uh, two stems three stems or four stems are uh, you know it is debatable but many farmers they go for three to four stems wherever like soilless or hydroponic system uh, they adopt two stems system to get uh, good shapes and size fruits across uh, the harvest. <clears throat> Here, one uh, good thing uh, means uh, best practice is select a best or strong uh, stem while you know retaining uh, uh, while uh, uh, during uh, doing this pruning because healthy and strong stem we should retain and weaker one should be pruned again time and direction of the pruning is also most important time is we should go for uh, means the pruning process should happen at least once in 12 to 15 days so uh, when they are you know these lateral shoots are you know tender that time only uh, pruning should happen because uh, there will be a, a no much diversion of energy towards uh, unproductive shoots. That's the reason time is most important and direction is also uh, most important. It is tough to decide while pruning, but uh, in, in, a, in a fair manner, we one should think about these directions. So it should be in opposite uh, directions. Both the stems should be in opposite directions so that after uh, you know few months the plant will be in opposite direction it it gives uh, uh, you know um, it gives it or it creates more aeration and also uh, each and every stem receives good sunlight and again right time pruning will will, uh, will give us a good quality fruits most of the time if you delay you know pruning many fruits will uh, appear or bear at the basal basal means uh, at the crown or our initial stage uh, you know some of them will be you know misshaped so that we should allow single fruit per node uh, to get a consistent or regular fruiting on every nodes most of the case what happens uh, you know farmers will get at least uh, close to 1 kg from initial stage only so they will be you know they they uh, uh, their concept is to if you get 1 kg in the initial month so that they can recover all those you know input cost that's how they they think because eventually what uh, how plant behaves if you allow more than uh, 3 to 4 uh, you know stems after you know uh, 150 160 days the plant will automatically it will you know uh, retain only two stems so that's the reason it's it's up to individual uh, preference but two stems or three stems it is most common and allowing one fruit per stem which is uh, it is very economical again shoot and leaf balance is also most important so First five to six nodes, one should keep, you know, one leaf, uh, you know, uh, on every, you know, shoot before, uh, means, uh, you know, when you prune, one leaf should be there. And uh, after 
you know 10 10 to 15 nodes means after first five to six nodes and then another five to six nodes three leaves are required to support plant to get more generate more energy and above that uh, we should allow all the uh, you know leaves only or shoots and only we should remove the flowers that's how we should maintain uh, throughout the crop cycle training pruning it is again common practice only one thing nowadays uh, farmers are uh, you know uh, we should maintain uh, y shape you know uh, uh, training like it should be in the opposite direction two stems should go in opposite direction uh, so that plant gets sufficient air and sunlight also again fruit selection sometimes some uh, genotypes are uh, are having a characteristics of give more than two to uh, three flowers per node but better to maintain a best quality one at the early stage after fruit setting and then uh, try to remove a weaker fruit or flower to get a, a continuous fruit setting again here uh, the combination of organic and you know uh, fertilizer is most important most of the things are same here uh, uh, capsicum requires higher uh, uh, nutrients because it 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 is uh, it it requires uh, you know uh, it's a long duration crop and also it's exhaustive crops that's the reason the percent of nutrients are uh, you know required on time same here uh, the most of the things are same some fertilizers uh, uh, requirement uh, will differ from stage to stage Micronutrient is also most important for any crop, even in capsicum also. Coming to pest and diseases, this sucking pest, especially thrips, is, is creating a lot of issue in the field right now. Especially like nowadays, we, we, are, we are getting like western thrips. That's also, it is uh, creating, a, uh, it's damaging a lot. So for early stage, better uh, going for a lighter you know admire and alliate it covers uh, most of the sucking pest and uh, damping off and uh, crop wilting so this infinito and profiler is working fine again nematode same method uh, like uh, cucumber uh, uh, vellum prime is working fine and uh, for these viral diseases here vectors are most important managing white flies is difficult because it is creating a leaf curl virus at the later stage that's the reason uh, we should get a healthy seedlings from the nursery also because if you if uh, white fly infect uh, there in the nursery that creates you know uh, this uh, uh, leaf curl virus in the main field that's the reason we should get a healthy seedlings and also many aphids it, it, it transmits the mosaic cucumber, uh, cucumber mosaic virus and some of the uh, other viruses, CVME also. For this sucking pest, this Moento, Cevento, Oberon is, is really working fine. And even mites also, Moento, uh, Oberon is working perfectly fine. Thrips, again, for thrips, a lot of uh, uh, farmers are struggling to control thrips. Uh, and some of the combinations are working fine. But again, uh, there is no... Uh, some of them doesn't have a label claimed. They are in the process of getting a claim. And also, along with that, some of the sticky traps uh, like uh, blue and yellow sticky traps are working. I mean, they are working fine. And most important is for, to control trips is we should maintain or uh, regulate the temperature within the polyhouses. Uh, with the help of uh, foggers and uh, shading nets actually we should focus more on this uh, you know maintaining temperature uh, before occurrence of these pest and diseases especially in the summer for the trips if you control the temperature and healthy seedlings if you if you are getting healthy seedlings definitely most of the time we will uh, uh, pass through this uh, these issues 
that's the reason uh, temperature is most important some cases we will face some uh, garments issue for that alan and belt expert it will be the suitable molecule for borers like uh, fame belt ex expert and recently bayer has uh, you know launched viago viago is working really fine for this all these leptoptrans like helcorpa uh, spodoctra litera and uh, even some of the uh, uh, like tuta and all those things for diseases quickly i will go through there are uh, some of the diseases are very common here uh, sarcospora leaf spot and anthracnose uh, alternaria leaf spot powdery mildew these are the very common diseases anthracnose from last two years it is getting uh, you know uh, it's uh, it is uh, damaging crop like uh, you know uh, this time actually in last year because of anthracnose many farmers faced issue because of high rainfall so for that anthrac anthracol uh, burunos bunos and nativa and lona experience are working fine again phytophthora in some cases it is not so common but wherever the soil is infected with phytophthora uh, there uh, uh, we can uh, get chance to see phytophthora wilt and rot for that profilar melodidio infinito is working fine some of cases bacterial spots are also uh, we can see for that any uh, copper based fungicides uh, you know if you take then uh, we can manage with that and for all these sucking means uh, diseases if you have a sufficient aeration then we can uh, reduce or we can uh, you know control at maximum maximum extent so we should aware about this aeration and control the humidity so that uh, we can avoid uh, this sucking pest oh, sorry uh, this is uh, especially this uh, all the diseases here uh, so first color uh, colored peppers or capsicum start uh, yielding 80 days after planting or 80 to 90 days depending of the season so every four to five five to seven days uh, intervals uh, can be uh, harvesting can be done and uh, it's again uh, color turning is depending on the market some uh, market it requires for a distance market uh, they will harvest at 70 to 80 percent color turn and uh, local markets they will harvest more than 90 percent color turn here average yield is around 35 to 40 tons and the crop duration will be around 240 to 270 days Quickly, I will go for tomato. Here also, plant uh, requirements, plant density is around 8,000 8, to 10,000, like 2 to 2.5 plants per square meter. And uh, bed width and all, it is same. Only plant to plant spacing, we need to extend from 50 centimeter uh, or little higher side also. Maturity you will get by, uh, means uh, by 60 to 65 days after transplanting. Crop duration will be depending upon the uh, uh, hybrid. So there are a few types in, in cucumbers, like, uh, sorry, tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes, round and plum, cocktail, fresh indeterminate, saladate, fresh indeterminate, round, and beef stick. These are few, you know, uh, uh, types uh, widely uh, used in the cultivation. Again, here also uh, pruning training is most important again tomato also most of the people uh, like single stem and some they go for double stem also every 12 to 15 days we need to go for uh, pruning uh, of uh, side shoots and maintain the only main uh, stem and also we should rem remove that uh, uh, side shoot also and uh, training it is again the same uh, this is a continuous process uh, we should do every 12 to 15 days once the most important part in in tomato is pruning and training it requires some labors because uh, here we will not face much disease and pest management issues like uh, capsicum but here uh, if labors get trained then it is easiest crop to grow uh, uh, tomatoes in polyhouses again pollination is another uh, you know big uh, challenge in even though tomato is self pollinated but it requires some kind of you know uh, vibration uh, during uh, early morning uh, means like uh, 
7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, that during flowering time, uh, we should do this kind of vibration. Like vibration means uh, it should be a, a many ways like uh, labels. We use some sticks to uh, vibrate the plant or some some cases, this uh, vacuum cleaner, they are using uh, not vacuum cleaner, blowers. Blowers are, uh, you know, being used to make a plant to vibrate and uh, some cases, some uh, bees in Western countries, they use bees, but here it is not allowed. And uh, fruit thinning is also most important, especially for beef stick tomatoes. For cherries and uh, uh, smaller uh, tomatoes, it's uh, not required, but beef stick, we should allow only four fruits at the initial clusters. And as and when crop grows, uh, we should allow three, two, one like that to maintain that uh, you know bigger size like uh, 180 to 250 grams coming to biosemnis portfolio just i will quickly go through our products because biosemnis it is uh, it's a number one uh, company in a vegetable industry especially in uh, glasshouse and uh, this uh, in glasshouse and rostock uh, deuter is is uh, uh, most uh, you know uh, best brand in in in, in globe and also in semnis for this plastic house and net house we have a wide range of portfolio uh, in in india we started uh, you know uh, trialing and identifying get best product uh, in uh, started from last 4 or 5 years with that results we launched a basilet for english cucumber segment which is giving a really good uh, you know yield in in the farmers field especially this is for summer season for uh, uh, north india and uh, central and uh, south it is for both or summer and rainy season also and sometimes even in winter also we can grow this variety well balanced plant type maturity is around six, uh, 35 36 days we will get the fruits cluster being two to four fruits per node and perfect fruit size and shape uniformity uh, till end uh, average foot length will be around 14 to 16 centimeter. Diameter will be 3 to 4 centimeter. Fruit weight is 120 to 150 grams. Very high yielding uh, variety and uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, resistance to some of the viruses like CME, CVYV, CYSDV, uh, WME, and uh, ZYME. And coming to PS64, this is bred for winter season. This product is really doing good for North India, especially in winter season, like uh, September, October, November months. Uh, the best quality of this product is strong vigor, vigor and uh, quick fruit maturity. Because of that, plant is giving, uh, you know, fast uh, fruit development and which is finally, uh, you know, uh, uh, gives uh, more more and more yield at every harvest because in winter the plant starts uh, seizing all its growth uh, develop growth and development that is a challenge for any plant but this product is doing really good against uh, winter fruit length will be around uh, 16 or 17 centimeter and fruit weight will be around 150 to 170 grams And coming to cherry tomato, we launched Junita uh, this year in, in a red round cherry tomato segment. Excellent food setting, having a multiple clusters per plant and also long clusters. Sometimes you will get a multi forking clusters. In a same cluster, there will be three, four sub clusters that will give maximum yield per plant yield or per uh, unit area. So average a number of fruits per cluster is around 20 to 30 sometimes it is 40 also the bricks content is around 8 to 9 percent average fruit weight is ranging from 10 to 15 grams initial one or two clusters maybe it will be around 15 or 18 grams but subsequent clusters it will be around 10 to 15 or even most of the cases around 12 grams per plant for fruit weight High yield is really good, high yield uh, variety or hybrid. And most important part is it has a short internodal uh, distance uh, part. 
that that gives uh, maximum or many number of clusters per plant during that growing period of time coming to sv422 40h it's our beef stick tomato which is widely accepted by most of the uh, means end customers like uh, companies uh, like a burger and uh, also some uh, like corporate uh, people and also some major cities they are using it for slices purpose this has a strong plant type excellent fruit firmness fruit firmness and pericarp thickness is really great because of that it is suitable for long transportation also average fruit weight will be around 180 to 250 grams and diameter will be 55 to 75 mm attractive red color and uh, flat round to high round shape you will uh, having this means uh, fruit shape is like flat round to high round and yield potential and disease package is also very good and another we have uh, uh, one row stock that is Xinjiang uh, which is uh, it's, it's we have done a lot of trials and uh, we just uh, waiting for the preference from some growers and some corporates because grafting is, is a new technology for India because the facility and again additional cost is, is a concern here otherwise this this is a best technology to get a maximum yield from different uh, means throughout the crop duration it has a wider uh, uh, disease resistance and uh, you know to maintain a longevity and a vigor of the crop for the uh, long duration that uh, uh, that is a special characteristics of this Xinjiang gang grow stock coming to one more uh, 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 you know segment like leafy seg segment there we have a radar and radar plus iceberg lettuce hybrids this is uh, actually doing very well in the open field condition cultivation uh, during a, a milder or a cold climate but due to high demand for this segment some some farmers or some companies they started growing under hydroponics especially for you know, cocoa pit cultivation in the urban areas as well uh, even in the polyos they are going for the bed cultivation so uh, this is a highly economical crop and uh, it has the ability to give around 350 to 600 gram very compact bugs and uh, very crunchy and less latex uh, sometimes during high temperature it is hard to get you know uh, getting a uh, bugs but during mild climate or moderate climate this is gives a very good best quality of you know uh, quality of uh, bugs so radar plus has uh, additional benefit of uh, you know like uh, downy mildew and xanthomonas uh, but radar is very popular in india it is almost uh, well accepted by most of the uh, these end users and customers and also how buyer is approaching in this segment uh, with uh, taking uh, help of value chain and food chain team because this is another we, we talked about uh, you know uh, how to uh, grow uh, these crops and how to maximize our production after that this value chain is also most important in traditional way it is traders and normal market it is highly dependency uh, uh, is there for that any protected farmers they should have a well network with this all retailers aggregators and processors or any uh, you know food processors one should have that connection so that after growing he should get uh, assured you know market and price for that quality so that uh, we can get a maximum uh, you know uh, returns out of uh, this protected cultivation so in that direction uh, buyer is working uh, buyers have uh, having a separate verticals to support farmers and also some of the exporters to reduce uh, you know residues also in future we are going to work working on this residual management also that that is another concept uh, we are bringing in this protected cultivation and along with that we are trying to support farmers in, in giving a right solution like pest and disease management, technical trainings to farmers, nutrition management, and training and pruning uh, uh, this 
part also and coming to last end of the slide phytosanitation is another most important aspects in protected cultivation this disinfection is is uh, most important like first of all uh, we should any structure should have this anti chamber with a double door system so that any any anyone enters inside uh, it should be like closed means uh, we should open the door after closing another door that practice we should have uh, uh, cultivate um, among uh, ourselves so that entry of this insects and any other uh, you know uh, undesirable thing should not enter inside the polyols proper drainage is also most important removal of all infected plants prophylactic sprays are also most important we should have a proper uh, mesh size uh, aprons usage is rarely used by farmers but slowly if you start using or practicing this will be you know helpful avoiding tobacco products and uh, proper waste disposal is also most important we should have a designated place to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, dispose all the waste material so that we cannot we we can avoid the further uh, infections also and also at the entry of your uh, farm better if you make some uh, uh, like disinfected solution for vehicles also or any implements also so that we will not uh, that uh, the material or equipment will not carry any uh, you know any this hazardous or any uh, this pest and disease uh, pathogens along with this equipments with that uh, thank you so much uh, for listening uh, you know uh, this presentation uh, i am going to end with this presentation uh, thank you so much Thank you, Mr. Shivanand, for giving us very elaborate talk. Um, I will uh, sum up in the end, but now I request uh, Dr. Raj and my colleague, uh, kindly don't take much time, highlight few points of his talk, though he had got many points which can be talked about, but a uh, few points kindly. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh... As all will agree that we enjoyed the lecture given by Dr. Shivanand on the protected cultivation and we compliment him for his uh, uh, very informative talk and the content presented this evening were highly informative for all of us. And uh, I should say that uh, this is a talk which gives A to Z of the protected cultivation. That's why uh, we can't uh, deliberate on all the aspects, but beautifully presented three vegetable crops how different dimensions of protected cultivation of these crops, what are the challenges faced, and minute delay details of about different packages of uh, package of practices, particularly the pruning, the suitability of different uh, type of structures. This we all learned about it, and he very well explained how the which are the right structures, importance of the ventilation, fumigation, its spot importance, alternatives uh, for with, uh, for the fumigation like. Uh, so, uh, soil solarization, IPM, how it has to be modified, how it is related with the uh, different components of the IPM, how it, those are related with the phenology of the crop. And tips for the installation of the, uh, for irrigation, that was also important, nutritional, uh, well-tested nutrition, nutritional package of practices were elaborated by him, why these are required. And the cultural practices which are very much important for the cucumber, capsicum, Tomato different uh, in a different form. Those were very well uh, explained, and the, in particularly uh, in bell pepper or this capsicum, how the selection of the seedling of the nursery plants are important, and how to uh, get it. And the tips given by him that the uh, white roots are important, and the pruning. Again, he has very well narrated the pruning, training, and the thinning of the fruits, uh, in particularly the capsicum. And the problems related with the thrips already uh, mentioned by him and in tomatoes uh, he gave the special uh, emphasis on the special requirements particularly for the protected cultivation and prom promising varieties of the uh, uh, these uh, vegetable crops all the three vegetables crop which are available and the uh, root stocks also which are available now with the bear he has mentioned about it 
and hand holding of the farmers is one of the most important thing which is going on with this organization and a new area which is related with the residual management it is important and phytosanitary measures which are very important for protected cultivation those are very well uh, described by him uh, we had valuable in uh, addition to our knowledge on the protected cultivation and we feel fortunate to have dr shiva with us to brought uh, he brought new insights uh, from the current research uh, and his talk motivated us and his uh, this talk is not only useful for the large scale protected cultivation but also for the it is highly useful for the urban uh, horticulture where small scale cultivation is also going on these can be picked up very well by the people who are new as well as commercial thank you very much thank you dr rajan dr kalia are you there i think dr kalia is not there uh, if he joins later we can have his reaction later uh, yes sir yes sir there. i am there if you are there please speak and add only in one minute uh, what you want to add to what rajan yes, has said uh, dr Don't rajan has covered the entire thing i think just one or two points i'll just highlight uh, mr hmm. shivananda also mentioned about uh, nutritional crops for uh, protected cultivation uh, but uh, um, uh, there he needs to highlight uh, what are those nutritional rich crops whether they are really nutritional dense varieties for protected cultivation even we don't have varieties uh, for protected cultivation indigenous ones for normal uh, plant habit uh, what to talk of not as nutritionals although we are looking forward that uh, in future protected cultivation is going to be the uh, rule of the day uh, we must have varieties which uh, can be used by the industry from nutritional point of view but there we need to highlight what are the varieties have they really been developed from nutritional uh, enrichment point of view or they are just for yield point of view another important point you mentioned about the structures the retractable which you highlighted that it's uh, costly but uh, uh, from uh, the crop growth point of view as people say that there is a hot air which needs to be uh, taken out of uh, the area within the from that point of view these retractable are going to be very useful uh, for the crop growth and uh, Uh, production from that point of view and various ailments that we get due to high carbon dioxide inside uh, that can be helpful and from ipm point of view uh, although you have mentioned that uh, resistant varieties but the story behind ipm is that uh, the anchor anchor of ipm is the tolerant varieties not the resistant varieties uh, because the resistant varieties always uh, make the pathogen to mutate and create its virulent strains especially that of insect pest so the tolerant varieties are the anchor of ipm and then the uh, the method cultural man management mechanical management biological con control which has been highlighted very well by you and uh, the grafting technology you also mentioned very beautifully that uh, the root stocks uh, provides longevity to the crop because of because of better root system and also uh, from the climate resilience point of view they will be better and that's why they can support the sign varieties which are otherwise perishable and good in a way, uh, nice way uh, but the chemicals where there is no alternative you have to go for chemical use there we should use the new molecules which have uh, less baiting period which also needs to be highlighted from growers point of view that when to spray and when to harvest the crop which is very important aspect to avoid uh, residue in the uh, crop going to the end users and the another point is because uh, it's only three crops but to sustain protected cultivation and the structures created by the growers it's important that we have more crops so the more crops what are the more crops which we can breed Uh, from protected uh, uh, cultivation point of view so that uh, these greenhouses protected structure runs for a longer period of time especially for protected cultivation we need crops which where where from you can have multiple harvest as the three you have mentioned from them but what are the other ones we which can be bred for protected cultivation which can give more dividends to the growers so with that i think it's we have nice talk and uh, the viewers must have enjoyed and many of uh, the Uh, growers uh, or the enthusiasts entrepreneurs who uh, might have been listening they have got complete package how to go about because 
that is not available everywhere and people feel uh, i mean uh, the low at that point whether to take up this program or not to take so thank you very much for nice presentation thank you thank dr kalia <coughs> there is a question uh, dr Sh shiva uh, in english cucumber at the time of fruit setting leaves turn whitish and fruiting stops can you react yeah yeah thank thanks uh, uh, for this question sir uh, i think uh, some it is uh, uh, whitish means uh, sometimes what uh, we can uh, see one is some micronutrient deficiency uh, we should uh, uh, check mainly uh, iron uh, manganese and uh, even sometimes boron also uh, we should especially we see such kind of uh, concern during a hot summer especially may june july months in northern india and uh, april may months in uh, southern india so and also uh, and sometimes we should see one or two plants like uh, uh, nematode uh, infestation also when when it is in a initial stage plants start uh, showing a lighter uh, yellowish kind of uh, uh, color on the fruits but mainly uh, if we manage uh, uh, micronutrient very well i think most of mo and even magnesium sulfate also that is also most important if you manage mm -hmm. all these three four uh, nutrients uh, i think uh, we can address uh, such uh, uh, issues okay thank you thank you, thank you Doc, mr shiva uh, <clears throat> i think the problem is to be identified then only the remedy is to be uh, first the cause why it is due to and the scientist uh, can find out that one the another observation um, this is a i think uh, demand uh, any scope of demonstration in jammu whether bear is uh, organizing demonstrations i don't know i'm not aware of you have to yes, react to shiva yeah if actually you are, uh, Oh, okay. uh, last in, in Jammu, we we uh, slowly started working with the horticulture department. One of our colleague is working. Uh, we gave some of the seeds for the demos last year. Uh, it is picking up slowly. Of course, uh, it has a potential uh, to get uh, this because in Jammu we will get a very good qualities of uh, capsicum because it it loves you know uh, cooler climates capsicum lettuces and uh, even even uh, uh, cucumbers also we can grow we have a lot of opportunities there in jammu uh, we started slowly uh, working with the horticulture department but still uh, we need to you know uh, focus on this uh, uh, on this uh, geography anyway kindly be in touch with the local horticulture department they can uh, <coughs> connect you with the bear uh, I, I i understand that route will be uh, better good so <clears throat> friends we had uh, i think very comprehensive talk by mr shivanand and uh, he has uh, concentrated only on vegetables protected cultivation is not limited to yeah. vegetable and that too only the three vegetables it has got the vast Mm, scope and the flowers is having the presence fault particularly the <coughs> gerbera uh, is there and uh, your lilium is there chrysanthemum is there roses are there the cut flowers uh, uh, they are there and in addition to that uh, number of uh, medicinal plant also will come later i promise that uh, we will get a speaker who will talk on those crops later. But I think we had in depth knowledge of these three crops and the uh, what all uh, the bear has got in kitty to give to the farmers. That is important. Uh, that's what I wanted, that uh, people should know what a bear can uh, help the uh, farmers. So he has mentioned what all the good varieties are there. They can be tried upon, first on a small scale, then on a a uh, larger scale now out of his talk though every aspect was very important and practical one uh, i liked it but the most important part which i want to emphasize is the 
phytosanitary measures in protected cultivation. If you are following the phytosanitary uh, measures, the saying that prevention is better than cure. Uh, if you are taking the precautions that the disease and insect pest uh, should have the minimum toll on the crop or should not appear, so you have to follow the phytosanitary measures. Uh, that is in the interest of the growers and in the uh, for the welfare of the consumers. Also, consumers would love to have crops like that which have been grown under <coughs> such condition without the use of uh, chemicals or minimum use of uh, chemicals. The another important aspect he has uh, uh, highlighted about the uh, graphs, the vegetable graphs, which uh, my colleague uh, Dr. Rajan has rightly pointed out, and uh, Dr. Kalia also uh, raised a point on the nutraceuticals, the nutrition value of the uh, produce uh, that needs to be highlighted uh, along with that. Uh, uh, whatever varieties are recommended, if their nutrition aspect vis-a-vis uh, -vis with the uh, um, crops cultivated in open or other varieties. Uh, so that will have an impact. So we had a wonderful talk this evening and I promise on this aspect on other crops and on advanced technologies also of this protected cultivation or greenhouse um, cultivation. Uh, we will be talking about and, and I was keenly seeing the photographs which has displayed. Um, he was talking about uh, protected cultivation in soil, uh, but uh, some of the photographs were in uh, the other medium. So we will be talking later about uh, those things. So with these words, I profusely thank uh, Mr. Sivananda. Uh, he has, uh, he must have worked hard to convey such things and uh, I'm sure the, the, the viewers how must have been benefited. At least I got a lot many new information. My colleagues also, I think they will agree with me, they must have got some new information, quite informative, educative talk. Please keep it up and keep serving the farmers. Uh, I think uh, farmers uh, will be requiring uh, the protected cultivation um, or they will be practicing protected cultivation on mass scale provided uh, private and uh, public sector both help them by giving the uh, good varieties, suitable varieties, high bids, high yielding one um, uh, which are resistant or tolerant to um, past diseases are all those uh, uh, problems. Uh, they will be happy to have it. So uh, both, it is a win-win situation, both for the service provider or the seed providers and the farmers and uh, the third party, we, the consumers. So let us uh, hope we have, as has been said, there is a um, great future for the protected cultivation. We will also be arranging uh, more talks on this particular aspect and uh, uh, on advanced technologies uh, <coughs> in the subsequent talks. With these words, I once again thank uh, Mr. Shiva, uh, Dr. Rajan, Dr. Pitam Kalia and my colleague who is helping us in running the show. Uh, I think the next uh, speaker perhaps me, uh, I will be talking about uh, urban soilless nutri gardens, nutrition gardens, and uh, horticulture nurseries. Both the topics are very um, dear to me. Uh, whatever little I know or whatever little literature I collect, I will be sharing with you next Tuesday, same time at uh, 7 p.m. Till that, uh, uh, bye. Good night. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. Good night. Bye. Good night, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks. Bye-bye, sir. Bye.